Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday afternoon. Hope yours is going well. And we have another Seahawks video to get to today, but first, we just hit 1,650 subscribers to the YouTube channel. We are growing every day. Please like the video down below, and if you haven't subscribed yet and want daily Seahawks content, please subscribe as well. Click the Join button down below to become a member. And as for members, let's go over the current channel members. Jason, Hillel, Anton, Hawk Asylum, Rye Guy, Rip, Carson, Caesar, Nick, Dylan, Aaron, Joshua, and new member Zank Fine. I want to go ahead and tip my cap to you guys in particular because those are my first 13 members and I want to say thank you to them. Thank you to everyone who subs to me, everyone who watches my videos. If you guys were not watching my videos, I would not be making them. Let's keep on pushing the growth. And today, we have to go into it, guys. I'm not looking forward to this one. I don't think anybody's looking forward to this one, but we have to do the autopsy. The Seattle Seahawks just played a game against the Arizona Cardinals where the defense had every opportunity to get pressure, to get hits, to get sacks on Kyler Murray. It was an overtime game. The game went for 70 minutes. Kyler Murray dropped back to pass over 50 times. We did not sack him. We did not hit him. We did pressure him a few times, but this was one of the most toothless performances in the history of modern NFL pass rush, and we got to go into it, guys. We got to talk about it, no matter how much we don't want to. So we're going to go player by player on this defense, and we're going to see who actually had contributions to the pass rush on Sunday night. Because there were a few players who contributed to the pass rush. They did get pressure on Kyler Murray, but as you will see by the end of this video, we will come to the unanimous, undeniable conclusion that it was not enough. So let's go through these players. First, Rasheem Green did not play. Looks like he's going to get back on the field this week. Please come back with some fire in your butt, buddy, because we're going to need it. Okay, Benson Mayoa, I know we're all mad at him because of that special teams play, and... I don't want to say he played a great game regardless of what this says, but he did get credited for three QB pressures against Arizona. So he was getting to Murray, and at least one of his pressures forced the incompletion on fourth down to get us out of danger <clears throat> of possibly um, losing that game much earlier than we did. So the pressures that he's getting in this game, the pressures that he got against Arizona did not have a big impact on whether or not Arizona had a successful play. I think that's one of the problems we had in this game. We got some pressure, but the pressures we got were not positive impact pressures. They still resulted in positive plays for the Arizona offense, even though we technically got pressure. But I will give Mayo credit, three pressures in one game. You can reasonably say he did a pretty good chunk of his job on, on Sunday. That penalty on special teams, we'll be feeling that one for a while, but... Um, in terms of QB pressures, he was the only guy out there who really had something to say for our pass rush. Um, LJ Collier, nothing new. He's still at 9, which obviously he's already surpassed my expectations. But um, if he wants to prove that he's not a first-round bust, he needs to expand on this number now. He's met the bottom-line goal of being at least something of a contributor. He needs to keep climbing. Did not do that against Arizona. Alton Robinson barely played, did not get another QB pressure. He stuck at two. Demontre Moore, he played a little bit, did not get a QB pressure. I still like the way he's playing. I still think he's doing more than I expected, but did not do anything against Arizona here. Jerron Reed, he got one pressure against Arizona, so he's up to five. And we are six games into the season. He's not even averaging a pressure a game. I mean, he was doing that last year, guys. He had way more than a pressure a game last year. So this is fast becoming a huge problem. I did put the red flag here because if Jerron Reed does not start getting multiple pressures in a game, does not start having monster games where he just terrorizes the opposing quarterback, he's not going to get anywhere close to my 2020 projection. So this is not going well. I'm not saying Jerron Reed is playing terrible football. He did do great stuff against Minnesota without getting QB pressures, but we need to see this number come way, way up soon. Puna Ford did get credited with one QB pressure against the Vikings. He's up to three. From a guy like Puna, I'm happy to take that. I got no problem with that. 
Brian Monet did not get another QB pressure. Daryl Taylor still isn't playing. Shaq Griffin, he played quite a bit against Arizona, but was mostly used as a QB spy, so no QB pressures for him. Anthony Rush, nothing new from him. Jonathan Bullard, nothing new from him. And you add it all up. The defensive line, after six games, has 44 QB pressures. Given the number of pass attempts we face this season, this is really, really not going to do it. But um, moving on to other positions, let's go to the linebackers. This is going to be quick, guys, so um, buckle up because we're going to blow through this fast. Bobby Wagner had one QB pressure against the Cardinals, and he was the only linebacker to get any kind of QB pressure. Nothing from KJ, nothing from Brooks. I do want to say real quick, I think Brooks played a pretty decent game. He had some positive plays out there, but I didn't see any QB pressures from him. Cody Barton still stuck on one. BBK not even really playing on defense, of course. Cornerbacks, we still have nothing from a cornerback on this team. Nothing from Shaq, Dunbar, Flowers, Amadi, Thorpe's out. So that's easy. And safety, we have nothing new under the sun from the safety position. Jamal Adams not playing yet. Hopefully he gets back this week. Quandre Diggs, nothing. Delano Hill still injured. Ryan Neal did not add to his pressure total against Arizona. And after six games, we are on we are on 60 three total pressures on the QB. Yeah, not enough no matter how you slice it. So let's let's put a little bit of a microscope on this Arizona game because we got a little bit of extra time here. So in total, we had a total of three plus one. So that's four, five, six. We had six QB pressures on 50 plus dropbacks against Arizona. Um, to provide additional context to how we played against the Cardinals, we had zero QB hits on 48 pass attempts. The last time a team allowed that many pass attempts without getting a QB hit was 2014, the Colts against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Six years. So yeah, no matter how you slice it, that was an abysmal game from the pass rush. By Pete Carroll's own admission, some of that is just because we were QB spying Kyler and we weren't trying to get a lot of pressure on him, but this is still highly unacceptable. We needed to get probably triple that number of QB pressures for us to feel good about where this team was headed. So I gave the defense a little bit of credit for playing tough against Minnesota and getting some decent QB pressures, and then it all comes crashing right back down. So where do we go from here? Well, the good news is... After next week, I will be able to add a new player to the defensive line in Carlos Dunlap. And we can expect Carlos Dunlap to swing in here and pretty immediately make this pass rush a whole hell of a lot better. So, to me, this will get better once we get guys like him in. And then you can maybe talk about somebody like Daryl Taylor. We can get Rasheem Green back. So, hopefully, hopefully... Starting this week against the San Francisco 49ers and then going forward from there, things start to look a little sunnier. But right now, I'm looking at a historically bad pass rush. I don't see how anybody could say anything else. So, with that, I'm going to get going. Peace out. Go Hawks. This was not a fun autopsy to do, but it was one that was absolutely necessary. We just have some guys on this defense that are not pulling their weight when it comes to getting pressure on the opposing quarterback and the pressures we are getting are not resulting in enough positive plays so cross our fingers hope it gets better and if it doesn't ken norton you gotta fall on the guillotine peace